Chris here. All right, today we're going to make a uh, spooky portal that lights up from behind. All right, so um, what I'm doing here is uh, I have a half inch extruded foam that uh, kind of stuff you purchase at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, you can get it pretty much any uh, big hardware store. I buy it in four by eight sheets, and then I'll crack it in half or whatever. If I don't have my truck with me, it won't fit in there. And then you just you know bring it home, and it lasts pretty much forever. You when you need it, you cut out a little piece like this. And then I'm using this uh, hot wire foam factory cutter I got for about thirty bucks, I think, on Amazon. Um, it works okay. I mean, it's not like Proxon is, is uh, one of the better ones where you can actually adjust the heat. You just have to go slowly with this and uh, be real aware of the wire because the wire tends to flex as you go along and uh, you won't get very straight cuts. Uh, so yeah, so I cut the outside out at first and then I cut the inside out. You can do this with an X-Acto knife or a box cutter. Just make sure you use a very sharp blade when you do it. Otherwise, you're going to butcher the thing, and it won't have nice clean edges as you move along. It's also a little harder to get sort of these rounded cuts that you can get with a hot wire cutter. Uh, one of my projects later is to show you how to make one of these. They're pretty easy to make, and then you can make it as big as you want, um, which will be good, and you can have a, uh, a vault meter on it so you can adjust the heat on it as well. Um, you could even make it as a, like with a lithium battery too, so it's portable. Uh, pretty nice, rather this one plugs into the wall. Anyway, so, all right, so, um, yeah, so I'm just about all the way through uh, cutting out the center piece here. This is pretty easy. It should only take about 30 minutes to do if you get all your stuff set up and ready to go. So, yeah, so sorry about my hands leaving the camera, but... Um, I was more focused on what I was doing here than necessarily what I was putting together. So yeah, so that's it. Uh, pretty simple cut right there. Um, uh, I next uh, went ahead and I took a uh, some plastic on the back, uh, just clear plastic. If you use probably something like uh, wax paper, you could probably remove it. Um, I'm taking the hot glue gun here next and uh, um, running the hot glue gun along here. I've tried lots of different things with it, uh, clear resin, I've tried uh, um, with a painted background, uh, I've tried just uh, trying to paint the um, uh, paint the portal uh, with you know different colors, kind of swirly colors and stuff, but to be honest with you, this really came out the best out of the lot uh, with this hot glue gun. It kind of gives a very uneven front to it. And then with the light that's shining behind it, this actually looked the best out of the different uh, uh, media that I tried to use to make it. So how this all started was that I'm in uh, three D&D 5e games, and uh, two of them are with the same group where another GM and I trade off just to give each other a break. And um, a GM was the other GM was supposed to be running it. And she sent a note out saying she had a, an emergency and wouldn't be able to run it that Sunday. So I said, well, crap, I don't have a bunch of terrain set up. So I got to do something quick for uh, uh, the next part of the campaign. So I just worked this up pretty fast. That was the concept behind it. All right. So here then I'm taking some tin foil and you put tin foil in a ball. And you just run it over the styrofoam. There's a lot of guys that have pretty good tips on doing this out there. But it's a fairly simple technique that a lot of guys use. Um, and uh, creates a nice sort of uneven texture. So when you paint it later, then it kind of gives it the stone look and it's fast and that's kind of why I like it. So I just sort of work the tin foil ball in. Uh, one of the good things is it's pretty you know, easy and inexpensive tool to use here. Uh, on the other hand, it does. You only you only get a few uses out of it before the styrofoam ball actually goes around and it doesn't work anymore. So then you just kind of throw it in the recycle bin and bust out another tinfoil ball. And you just work the edges here to kind of give it a uh, rocky edge. If you wanted to go do a little more, you could kind of cut some nicks out of it with your X-Acto knife or your box cutter and um, uh, kind of stimulate sort of chips or, or simulate kind of chips in the stone as you're going along. So yeah, this just kind of takes down the edges a little bit, those, those hard edges that are there. 
So I was going to remove the plastic, but it looked like it was being a pain. So I just decided just to go ahead and cut the plastic out with the X-Acto knife in the back and then just remove it. And it wasn't a big deal. It showed straight through, so it was fine. I was covering it anyways in the back. So it all worked out just well. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. And uh, I had some, the base, I had some MDF. Again, I buy big 4x8 sheets of MDF and then cut them with a jigsaw as I need it. You can cut them with a handsaw if you need to. Uh, uh, that's it. And then just sand the edges down to kind of give them a, uh, you know, a bit of a, um, just a rounded edge. So when you lie, put it on the, uh, your terrain, then uh, you don't have these sharp edges that are all there. So, yeah. Um, right. All right. So I just, uh, then took it and, uh, just tested it a little bit. I had already measured everything and had an idea of what I wanted and pre-cut some stuff. So I was cleaning up here. I'm cleaning up some of the spider webs that I get. I'll oftentimes take a lighter and just run a lighter over it, and that actually burns the spider webs off pretty well there. Uh, and um, yeah, so just testing it right there, make sure it works, looks good. So you can take some, uh, put the hot glue then on the bottom of it, and it sticks there just fine. You do have to be careful with the hot glue because the hot glue will melt the foam. So just kind of put it on the, uh, the bottom there a little bit and stand it upright. And uh, let it cool for a few seconds. There you go. Just kind of position it where you want it. And then let it cool. And then you want to take the hot glue gun. Once it cools a little bit, it only takes a couple seconds to cool down. Uh, and just run the hot glue gun around there quite a bit just to uh, um, you know, fill it out. Yeah, and that's it. Again, apologize for my hands going off the camera. I was more focused on what I was doing than the camera in my face, but, uh, you know, yeah, it happens. But you get the idea what I was working on here. And then I just filled in the bottom a little bit with some more of the hot glue just to even things out a little bit. All right, and that's it. So, yeah, put it down. And uh, after this, you can base this pretty much any way you want to. A quick way that I do it is just take some PVA glue. And a lot of guys do this, take some PVA glue. And work it around here I think I was just checking to make sure to see how whoops dropped it making sure how it was going and if I needed to add any more hot glue here uh, to uh, yeah, peeling off some more of the spider web comes with it there and you can actually see through it, it looks pretty cool even the way that it is uh, going there um, yeah I just filled in some more empty spots here like on the bottom you see how you can see through it so I just filled all that in with the hot glue that I had and uh, kind of dripped it around a little bit, careful to make sure that it wasn't uh, dripping down the back because I have uh, later on, you'll see what I mean, where I have something flat up against it and you don't want all this uh, hot glue that's there. So yeah, that's it. All right, so next step then here is to uh, take a little PVA white glue and some guys use uh, um, that uh, Elaine's Tacky glue. Uh, I find that just the regular old white glue that you use in, um, you can get it at uh, the hardware store where it's cheap. I wouldn't buy it at a craft supply store. It's pretty expensive there. But the uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot, they sell it pretty cheap. Just work some of that glue around there. There you go. Real fast, real easy. Take your finger then once it's done and just kind of smooth it out a little bit all around there. You can take a paintbrush if you don't like dipping your finger in the glue, but that's not a big deal. Just kind of work that glue around a little bit. Make sure you get it. Uh, be careful not to, um, you know, not to uh, uh, get it up the side of it, because when you put the sand down to base it, then you're going to uh, get the sand up the uh, um, up the side of the foam. I will say that uh, the next time that I do this, I'm definitely painting the base and the um, uh, and then the uh, stone part, the foam, before I go ahead and put the hot glue in only because, you know, if you're, you go slow and you're careful, you can do it. But if you want to get this done fast and you're, you got a deadline you're working on and most of the projects that I do, I have deadlines. So I just don't make them just to make them. I make them to use them in games. Uh, I would have, would have gone ahead and painted everything first and then applied the hot glue after that. And I wouldn't have needed to go slower, especially when I was painting on the inside, on the edge, uh, there um, on the inside of the portal 
by where the hot glue is. So yeah, so then I just you just want leave it overnight there, let everything dry, and uh, yeah, clean up a little bit. <laughs> leave it overnight, uh, PVA will dry in about. Uh, assuming your house isn't freezing cold, my it's it's winter time, so the the house was a little chilly. But if uh, um, in the summertime you want to leave it outside, it'll in the sun it'll actually dry in a couple hours. But I left it overnight, and then you just pour the excess off when you're done. There. All right. The next step here is I took my compass and I went ahead and I had measured the back already to give me an idea of what I want. I set my compass where I had a little bit more to go on because I was going to make a cone with this. And you'll see what I'm doing here. So I, uh, I just uh, uh, draw the circle, and then uh, make the uh, the cone there. Cut it out. You don't have to be, you know, super meticulous with this and make sure it's perfect. You just want to be able to get a, a basic circle here, and. Uh, um, and then find your center after that. So just cut off some of the square edges that you know that are there. And here I'm just using uh, uh, like cereal box or you know thin cardboard for this. I think this was actually oh no, it's a pizza box. That's right. It was a frozen pizza box that I used for to make this. Find your center with a compass. That's right. Yep. Find your center. There with the compass and uh, poke a nice big fat hole in there. Yep. It's the easiest way to do it rather than measure it with a ruler. Pretty simple, simple concept here. This is what I'm saying. This is all pretty easy stuff. This doesn't require a lot of practice and skill to be able to do this. You can do this real fast. And, uh, and if it's warm out, it's even faster because you don't have to worry about overnight for the paint to dry and the glue to dry. All right, so I was just sort of testing the tin foil here, and I was using the tin foil. You don't have to use tin foil here, um, but it, it, it does help to sort of uh, reflect the light that's there. And I just kind of broke off a square piece that I could find really easily, ripped off a piece there, and again, doesn't have to be super careful with it. And so you got it there, and uh, yeah, so I'd already cut it. And you're going to fold it over a little bit to kind of create a cone effect with it. So you just cut halfway through to the center. And uh, there I was making the hole a little bit with the X-Acto knife, making the hole larger. You'll see what I'm doing that for later. I started cutting it with the X-Acto knife, and then I just think I took a pen or a pencil and just pushed it through to make the hole large enough that I could fit. Later on, I'm using one of these uh, LED lights that you can get from a uh, craft store. I think they're like five or six bucks for a package of six. You can buy one or two if you want, but you know, if you buy more, obviously it's cheaper. And I use these for a lot of different projects that I have, these LEDs. These are the ones, incidentally, that have a chip in them so that the LED actually flickers and uh, simulates sort of like real light. If you get, you can get the wrong ones where they don't have a chip in them and it's just an LED light, that's all, and they don't flicker. And they don't look as nice, uh, like if you're making torches or if you're making the uh, the backs of uh, using this for the back of the portal. So I just cut it out a little bit, cleaned it up, and uh, made the, uh, there you go, folded it around. And then just apply some hot glue on there. Yep, right out of the freaking camera. Just uh, put some hot glue on there. And uh, yeah, close it up and set it. So I'm just setting the hot glue on there and folding it and holding it in place so that it cools. There you go. Right. And so you just get the cone effect from that. Very simple. There you go. Yeah. And just put some of there on there just to kind of beef it up a little bit so that it won't fall apart as it's sitting there. Give it a second to dry. It's not too hot, so it wasn't wasn't that bad. You do, you do want to be careful not to burn yourself, I've, but that comes to the territory eventually. You burn yourself multiple times. All right. So then I took some, uh, yeah, pulling off some spider webs, and then I just fit the uh, dry fit the uh, LED in there to see if it would fit. Nope. So then I just should have done this in the beginning. Is taking the, taking a pencil or 
just push the pencil through it and boom yeah that's the way to do it just push that pencil so the led fits better if you got a pen handy that works too anything it's fine it does again it you don't have to get this a tight fit here because you're gonna you can actually glue that to it but it's actually was pretty snug and fit in there nicely i got it in there yep pushed out some more of it fatten that thing out a little bit there you go and push it through and there you go and that's it yeah so fit in there kind of snug so it's all good. Tested it. Everything worked great. So then I put a just pushed the tin foil through there and uh yeah, poke a little hole. Just be careful not to rip that tin foil too much because you want that tin foil to uh um you know, you want that tin foil to kind of stay a little bit. I think when I pushed it through, I ripped it a little bit. Not a super big deal, but uh you know, the the tighter you can get in there. The better it's gonna it's gonna work and uh, yeah just just dry fitting it here making sure everything worked and fit well you can take a little hot glue and put it around there yeah it doesn't have to be much just something just to kind of hold it in place so I worked it there yeah you are using quite a bit of uh, hot glue through this project but the hot glue is pretty cheap. So, yeah, so I think you could probably do this. I mean, assuming you have some of the tools already on hand, you could probably only cost you maybe, you know, worth the supplies and stuff. If you buy the small pieces of foam and, uh, you know, you're using the tin foil and things from around the house, you could even use cardboard on the base if you wanted to. You could do this pretty cheaply for probably only five or six bucks, you know, if you want to invest a little money and you plan on doing this more of this then it's worth it to get a huge sheet of the mdf foam or the the mdf board huge sheet of that and then a huge sheet of that uh the the foam i buy it in both the half inch and then they sell it in two inch and i like using the two inch for uh bigger pieces of terrain and then the uh the, these these projects like this like portals and things and building buildings i like using the uh working with the half inch foam because it's pretty easy so i ran some uh beads of the hot glue around the outside of that uh, little funnel that I made just kind of worked it around so it was all tight and uh, yeah and that was it and it glued down and stuck and then it was reflecting you don't have to use a tin foil here but I found that it looked better and it reflected the light a little bit better on the other side uh, and helped to uh, to spread it out so that uh, on the other side so it looked like it was, uh, you know, that it was there. So after that, I went and uh, once I dry fitted it, went ahead and just hot glued that to the back there. Tested it a little bit, looks pretty good. Shut it down and go ahead and run some beads of hot glue around the outside of the funnel. Again, doing that off camera. That's there, but yeah, so I just worked the hot glue around the outside of it. And um, put down, and just kind of pressed it against the back. And see, you can see this the, the plastic that I used. I had just glued that down a little bit, and it didn't bother it one bit. If you use wax paper or something, or you might be certain certain plastics it doesn't stick to as well. So um, this particular sheet that I used, that the hot glue really stuck to it. Other plastic sheets you can kind of play around with. Test this saran wrap. You could even use saran wrap if you want. That would work just fine. Just anything to keep the hot glue controlled so it doesn't leak out all over the place or doesn't really stick to the... It wouldn't stick to the cutting board here. And you can actually, after you did that, I could probably just peel the whole thing off. But I just wanted to make sure that I didn't damage it, so I was pretty careful. So yeah, so that was it. So I worked the hot glue around the outside there just to make sure that it's uh, stuck and pressed up. And um, yeah, doing it, settling off camera, not focused on uh, on the camera so much as more what I was doing. You get lost in these projects as you work, right? And that's it. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then I'll go ahead 
uh, and uh, base it black after this. And so I think I let some more of the, uh, the glue just dry a little bit, let it sit there. Took a break, but I could have, I was really pressed for time. I could have just immediately based it right there if I had the paint and everything set up, ready to go. Now, some guys will mix a Mod Podge there. Okay, that was another project that I was working on. I had just finished painting a uh, um, uh, some terrain that I had been working on and just, just basting it with black. That's it. So I moved that out of the way a little bit. And uh, yeah, there's the portal right there. So you can see the portal and that terrain kind of fit together through the whole process. That's going to sit on there. So I just spend some time painting it. And again, I would recommend that you uh, paint, you base it and then paint it at least, you know, the front and the inside of the portal before, because this kind of took some time doing this. I had to be really careful. I got another brush out, in fact, another finer brush to paint the inside of the portal where the, uh, the hot glue met the uh, foam. Yeah, and just spend a few minutes just basing it black. And I ended up, uh, once I uh, uh, based the whole thing black here, as you can see, once I did that, and the tin foil and the cardboard and everything, the back part, I painted that, um, I ended up uh, putting a coat of spray paint on the back of it. Now, you can't use spray paint with, uh, with that MDF foam. It'll melt it. The solvents in there will melt it. Uh, so, um, you have to do something like put, this is acrylic paint. You have to put a coat of acrylic paint over the whole thing. As you can see there. Yeah. See there, I'd spent some time painting the whole thing. And, um, uh, once I did that, then it, it obviously the acrylic paint really wasn't sticking to the plastic on the, uh, um, on the, the little led light. So I ended up spray painting that. And then here you just take a little bit, you dry brush in here. So you take a, um, there's a lot of tips out there for people for uh, dry brushing minis or dry brushing terrain. Uh, what you do is you take just a dry, a dry brush, obviously, and like in the name, and then you take a little, uh, take some gray paint. I'm just using some very inexpensive gray paint that you pick up at uh, um, Michael's or AC Moore, any other local hobby source, and uh, just brush it on like that, just to dry brush it and kind of simulates that granite rock feel uh, if you really want to go that's it that's all you know you want to take it to the next level you can add another dry brush you can wait till that dries and dry brush some white over it some browns whatever your terrain calls for that you're doing but uh that's pretty much the whole thing that's it real simple you set it up right there and you're good to go and uh, used this, started it Friday evening and finished it up Saturday night. I was ready to go for my Sunday game at 1 o'clock. Had a, uh, a nice little adventure. That was it. All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, see you next time.